I'm Alexandra and I am standing outside of the historic Tolan Hall today, located in front of Bowman and across the street from downtown Clemson. So this building was built in 1893 using labor of convicts. It was originally called the main building or the agricultural hall, but then came to be known as Tillman Hall, named after Benjamin Tillman, who was a governor of South Carolina and a member of the U.S. Senate from 1895 until his death in 1918. So what most people don't really know is that Benjamin Tillman um, was known as one of the most vitriolic racists in the U.S. Senate. He was a big opponent of civil rights for African Americans and was even known to speak down and about how down to African Americans and about how he um, has killed them before on the Senate floor. He was known in July uh, of I think 1896 or so to lead a mob of white supremacists called the Red Shirts through Hamburg, South Carolina to kill six African Americans and murder four others that the group had captured. Um, and because of Benjamin Tillman's horrible racist history, um, many students have actually spoke up about the fact that this building is still named after him and still carries the weight of his actions. Uh, especially the class of 2014 and 15, that class year of students, um, I believe they had a, a rally actually calling for the building to be reverted back to um, the name of Old Main or the Agricultural Hall instead of being named after Tillman. Um, they wrote letters to President Clements and they have made online petitions, but so far the university has said that only the Board of Trustees can change the name of Clemson. So. My name is Alyssa and I'm here to talk to you about Schletter Dining Hall and its history. So back in the 1900s, there was a guy that worked here nicknamed Shorty and he was a bus man and everything and people loved him on campus. However, um, President Riggs was pretty suspicious of his actions so he hired a private investigator and I say private so it have no link to the university. And the private investigator found out that Shorty was embezzling $8,000 a year for 10 years Whereas, to put that in perspective, President Riggs was only making 3500 a year. So, President Riggs wanted to completely cover this up and let, Sh let Shorty work here for a while and eventually fired him and eventually named the dining hall after him, Schletter Dining Hall. And Schletter was just very loved among his peers, so it was just kind of a crazy action for him to be embezzling that much money. and I'm here in Brackett Hall outside of the Gantt Multicultural Center named after Harvey Gantt and his wife Lucinda. Harvey Gantt was the first African American accepted into Clemson University. Now Harvey's journey to Clemson was not as easy as we have it today. Back then Clemson was a racially segregated school and would not allow Harvey in at his first try. He first started studying ar architecture at Iowa State University but wanted to go to the first the he wanted to go to the in-state college that had all of his courses. After years of fighting, January 16, 1963, Harvey Gantt was finally allowed into Clemson. Because of his journey, he changed the viewpoints of Clemson and how people got in later years. We're reporting here live from the Fort Hill Plantation House. This house is an historical landmark of Clemson University, and the story this house holds is an interesting one. The original house was built as a four-room home by Pastor James McKinley. It was called Clergy Hall. In 1825, John C. Calhoun and his wife Flora Calhoun moved here from Washington, D.C. At the time, John C. Calhoun was serving as the Vice President of the United States. He, in, he rented this property from his mother-in-law and he and his wife had 10 children. This house was renovated to a 14-room home to accommodate this large family. In 1836, Mrs. Calhoun died, leaving her, the plantation to her daughter, Floride. Both her and her husband were on the title of this estate. 
John C. Calhoun began purchasing land around this estate, amassing a total of 1,100 acres. In 1838, Thomas Green Clemson married Anna Marie Calhoun, daughter of Floride. Two years later, the Clemsons moved to the Fort Hill House and lived with Anna's family for five years. In 1850, John C. Calhoun died, leaving everything to his wife, Floride. At this point, the plantation grew to 1,300 plus acres. In 1854, Floride sold Fort Hill to her eldest son, Andrew. Floride died in 1866 and willed most of the Fort Hill plantation to her daughter, Anna Clemson. In 1872, Thomas and Anna retired to Fort Hill. When Anna passed away in 1875, she left Fort Hill to her husband, Thomas Green Clemson, along with the passion to establish an agricultural, an agricultural and a mechanical college for the state. In 1888, Thomas Green Clemson passed away and willed the property to the state. Clemson Agriculture College was renamed Clemson University in 1964. Both the statue of Thomas Green Clemson and the Fort Hill House are still here on campus today. It is open seven days a week for a tour, so come on down and view the roots of Clemson University at any time. Thank you and good evening.